Hi, welcome to Potentially Genius, where we, Tomorrow Lab, take what is probably a potentially genius idea and turn it into more of a potentially genius thing. We're gonna do this all in just 16 hours of studio time, which is way faster than our usual process. Normally our projects take hundreds or thousands of hours. So this is gonna be super fast, really accelerated. It's more of a race against time to see how real we can make something in the shortest amount of time possible. We have a four phase process to do this. We start with discovery, then we go into ideation, followed by prototyping, and then a final presentation to our potential genius. So let's get into it. Hi, Jasmine, how are you? Good, thank you, how are you? Great, uh, do you mind introducing yourself? I am an undergraduate student at ASU. Um, I'm also the founder and creative director of Countdown Circular Economy Solutions. It's a tech startup focused on tackling plastic pollution through product design. Um, I was a fellow with the United Nations Academic Impact Millennium Fellowship, and through that I was trying to do something that aligned with Sustainable Development Goal 12, which is responsible consumption and production. There's an abundant supply of plastic, you know, everywhere right now, and I see it as a raw material opportunity. Um, so the goal right now is to really make innovative consumer products that not only transform the idea of waste, but show that we can create new value out of waste. Are you imagining the intervention happening at the, the moment of disposal? Like someone has a, like, let's give a, a journey of a water bottle kind of mm -hmm. situation, right? Yeah, the, exactly. The bottle is usually blown and filled with water, oftentimes in the same facility. I would say there's three challenges. The first of which is contamination. Um, if there's still even a bit of water left in it, um, it's considered contaminated. Secondly, sorting. Many people don't know that the, the bottle cap and the bottle itself are, are two different types of plastics and therefore need to be separated. Um, and then the third is sanitation, of course, especially in times of pandemic that often adds another layer of complexity to this challenge. Okay, I have a really simple idea. Going back to something Jasmine said earlier, what if it's a, an attachment that just takes the bottle cap off of a bottle when you put it in the trash can? <laughs> we always know those are two different materials. So it just like grabs the bottle, takes the cap off, and at least those are separated. So yes. if we're cutting it off, are we collecting it? And then that's the thing that we're turning into a product? Yeah, it's a bottle cap, because that's a really valuable material. Um, it, it's like, you know, there's even like a lot of bottle cap collecting campaigns um, because you can melt those down easily and compress it into like a tile, even as basic as a tile or turning to something more sophisticated. Well, this is interesting. All right, a bottle cap removing trash can. I'm super excited about this idea actually because it tackles like a really critical part of the whole chain. So I'm super excited about the potential impact for an idea like this. So the brief is, has three parts. We are going to interact with the consumer by trying to train them better and raising awareness of the problem. We're going to interact with the recyclers, uh, both the small scale and the large scale, to give them better uh, clean product to work with. And we're going to interact with the producers slash um, brands uh, who created the problem in the first place. What you got, Joe? We got two kind of overkill kiosk ideas. Yeah. Uh, so first, two little like brakes come in and grab the bottle. On the lower side where the cap is, you have uh, a V, like this kind of cutting block. So it just slices the cap in half. The plastic parts fall to the side. The liquid drains past this little grid here then you open the hatch so that the plastic of the cap can be collected and then the bottle goes to the other side. Big overkill kiosk with two collection things. Having a large window for that could make it like this machine spectacle to see the mechanics happen. All right, and then the second one is thinking of a different way to do it without having to like capture the whole bottle itself. So we have a big old screen just with a, with a painted kind of decal that makes it this arrow shape pointing toward where the bottle is going to be cut. Uh, on the top, you have your ticker for how pitiful your recycling effort is compared to how many plastic bottles are being made. Uh, then you have this QR scanner that points at the bottle and that is the only time it will start cutting is after it counts what kind of bottle it is. Put it past this little rubber stopper guy uh, and then similarly, it cuts, it drains, and then there is a hole to the side 
for um, the person standing there to put the bottle into the side recycling bin. So I was thinking about if you were to separate the caps and actually collect them, like you would only do that if you weren't putting them in the general recycling stream. So in that case, you could have a machine that cuts the cap off, grinds it into flakes, and it's almost like a big belly trash can where it's got a heated press and it's just compacting it into, into sort of pristine HDPE sheets that could be used for like whatever local recycling or fabrication efforts they're, they're doing. Um, so Jing Wen, after seeing all of these ideas, which are, you know, sort of mechanical ideas and some electronics, like are there any things that you could think of that we could or should source from DigiKey? I think there are a couple of things we can source from DigiKey. Uh, one is uh, obviously any type of sensor or detector that detects the uh, position or like the existence of the bottles. Uh, for example, we could use uh, infrared uh, red LED sensor pa pairs, like our IR sensor pair to detect whether a bottle is in place to trigger any of the mechanisms. So we have to pick one of these, right? I would either think we should do um, like a counter project like Joe's suggesting, or we um, try and build some kind of like dead simple automation for uh, processing the caps, or maybe just processing the flake from the bottle cap sorter that sorts by color. It could also be like a pinball, like it falls down. So it kind of creates a celebration of like a cap is recycled. Code. And the collection, like, you could have a bunch of clear boxes underneath that fill up with different colors. And then you could put that in the middle of campus for funsies. So this is about celebrating the color of recycled plastics. Okay, I've come up with a design that is separated into different modules. So we have the top, which is the display, the middle, which is the actual sorting mechanism that we'll be prototyping, and the bottom, which is a sorted collection. This area and this window gives you a little bit of feedback and a prompt for what you're contributing to. Uh, what's interesting about the fact that this is modular is that they could be used without certain parts, uh, responding to the uh, cost needs of the community it's serving. The main point that we'll be prototyping is the sorting area in the middle. Hey guys, um, so I wanted to call this quick meeting to just talk about how we are going to achieve sorting because that seems to be like the center of our new idea. Electronically, how are we going to achieve this? And mechanically, uh, what kind of configurations are we looking at? Yeah, so electronically, uh, first about color sorting, we could uh, use a color sensor. Um, I found this color sensor on DigiKey that can provide a reading of RGB value of any object we place on top of the sensor. It also has an LED built onto this breakout board so that it can light up so this color sensor could work even if it's in a dark environment. Uh, the second is like how to push the cap into in a direction like we can sort it. Uh, we could use this tiny uh, solenoid. It is, is it a tiny solenoid or a mini solenoid? It's a mini solenoid. Yeah, so they have large, medium, small, and mini. Great. Um, and how long would it take to prototype uh, the circuit? Oh, we've already breadboarded the circuit. And Wait, done? Oh, great. All right, so that's taken care of. Uh, it looks like we kind of have a decision tree here. On the one end, we can do a conveyor belt system uh, with multiple kickers. Uh, what that would do is let you feed in sort of more caps. They would roll along, they'd get red by Jing Wen's color sensor. And then when they're aligned with the right color, they'll get kicked off the line. So the thing about the belt drive, I think it's cool. It would look really cool, but you have to have basically one kicker per color. If we put them in a circle and it's just like a, a rotary thing, then you just have a hopper on top with a trap door. Here, here's a bad drawing. You rotate it to the correct position and just trap door drop it through. I love that. I also have a bad drawing of the linear one. That's not a bad drawing, that's a great drawing, you're crazy. Well, it's, it's, it's I've, I've, hand, I've hand waved many things about it. Um, but basically like come in here along the belt, kicker, kicker array into clear boxes over here. So top view, that's kind of what's going on. I so think it would be kind of spectacular. 
I think it would be beautiful, right? Like this thing's coming along and then there's a little conveyor that's going like tap, 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 mm -hmm. tap, tap. The uh, only advantage of the linear one is it's theoretically infinitely scalable. It's more scalable um, and it could potentially process more. I think we proved the, the concept with the uh, uh, rotary system, with the turret. We'll do uh, some modeling for next week. And Jing Wen, thank you for your bonkers contribution on this, as usual. All right, guys. Well, I've done a little cat. Oh! Look at that. It's okay. a turret. There's a solenoid here, detects the color, um, and uh, it rotates to the correct position kicks the cap over, the cap falls down through here, it lands in the correct receptacle. Each of these can be a, a different color, that would be nice. This could be a belt or a gear connected to a servo or a stepper motor, but this whole, this is like a big shaft through the middle. The only change I'd make to your configuration, Jesse, is I think I would put the full breakout board and power system on the top platform. So it's all just, yeah, it's just all local on the top. Um, and that whole thing rotates. So I'll make a new version that has 180 degree range of motion. The servo's not at the bottom, it's all within that central package, mm -hmm. as well as the electronics and power. Welcome to the shop. It's a rainy, thundery Friday afternoon, and I'm doing the very exciting step of assembling some parts that I've printed. So I drew it up, I made CAD, I ran it on a 3D printer, and now I have all of these parts. And uh, so we're gonna put some stuff together, which is the best part, because you get to see if it works, and hopefully it works. Alrighty, and that's all the pieces we got for now, but I think this is looking pretty cool. Show this to the team, maybe get, um, Somebody to write some code and we'll keep moving. Hey Jasmine, good to see you again. Hey, good to see you guys again too. So excited. I can't wait to see what you guys have put together. In this process, uh, we saw all of these really cool products that are made out of bottle caps. Well, most bottles are clear, the caps are really colorful, they're really fun. And we realized that there's kind of like a potential crafty market around the caps themselves. We started thinking about, oh, maybe we could create a system that collects the caps and sort of compresses them into like a big solid block. Um, and then uh, it came up in one of our conversations that maybe we would want to sort the caps by color. Because if there are these beautiful, colorful caps, maybe those are like, as a craft item, really valuable and they're in like separated into colors because then people can actually start to make art and product with them. When you start to make choices in what you make, you have more agency over it, it's more fun to make, and it's more valuable uh, as an end product. We were more interested in this small scale recycling um, like Precious Plastics is doing and, and like yeah. you're doing at ASU. The plastic does become more valuable if you have control over the colors. So these were a few rough ideas for how you would actually start to sort bottle caps by color. We did go ahead and make a prototype version of that sketch you saw. So it looks like this. Um, it's, it's a little recycled itself. This is a former Thai iced tea bottle on the top. Um, it's on a stand. There's some prototype electronics down here. The main components are, um, it has a color sensor in it, and that's okay. hidden behind this red. There's a color sensor right there. Um, when you drop a bottle cap in, it lands in front of the color sensor, detects which color it is. This whole thing rotates to a certain position and kicks it out with this little kicker, which is a solenoid. Jasmine, one of the approaches that we took with this um, with this design is to try to take that precious plastic idea of how do we how do we design something, but keep in mind that we want really as many people in the world to be able to recreate it as possible. So, as you can see, everything is made from three D printed parts and a lot of the used bottles. Here's how it works. So that's blue. Okay. Is a red one. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. There you go. You got the LED working too. But the idea here is like, what if we could build that and then just speed it up a little or build it and have a stack of caps that you drop in and it just ticks them off one at a time. 
Um, right. And so, uh, yeah, that's where we would take this next. So this is actually a great um, resource for making furniture because it's like, oh, I want to make a red chair. Um, I know that HDP is durable and I want it to be red specifically. So if I have all the red bottle caps here, and I want to add like a, a splash of blue in this area. You know, it does it does make the process just a lot more simple. And as you guys mentioned, you know, otherwise these bottle caps would be lost in the process of recycling because they're too small. Um, and so this way we're creating value. You know, it's that whole idea of precious plastic. We're creating value of something so minuscule, um, which and it has a lot of value. Um, and that's really exciting to see this kind of make that make that happen. So Jasmine, do you think we created a potentially genius thing? I, I do. I really do. I think it makes the process fun. Um, it's exciting and it's innovative. Uh, you, you know, people don't think about bottle caps in this way, especially. So this is so cool to see. Jasmine, thank you so much for your time and bringing this problem to us. I'm really happy with how this all turned out. We had so much fun working on this. So thank, thank you, you very much. Oh, thank you. Like this was, this is amazing. Just the whole process. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's really funny. It's all Robots are the yeah, best. A little kick. <laughs> hey, thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much to our guest. Thanks so much to DigiKey for sponsoring this. Listen, if you guys have potentially genius ideas, not your big idea, but just like a fun idea or something that you want to see us make, put it in the comments. We're going to be reading them. We're going to be looking for likes, upvotes, or whatever you kids call it. And the ones that like get the most traction, we might actually bring onto the show. We'll reach out to you, you get to be a guest, and we'll build the thing that's in your head. That's our job. Also, if you have any thoughts about our process, comments, criticisms, we don't care, tell us down below. Yeah, and if you wanna see more of our work, go over to tomorrow-lab.com, uh, or you can find us on Instagram. Thanks again. Bye.